Come on, he is the answer to every issue, every problem, every question that you have today. Jesus Christ is the answer. His presence and his power is here in this place. Do you believe that today? Can you lift your hands to heaven with an act of surrender unto him? God, we magnify you. God, we lift our voices to heaven right now. God, we need you to show up, God. We need you to move in this place. We exalt you, Jesus. Come on, let's lift our voices right now. God, we need you to move in this place. God, be exalted in this place, oh God. Blessed be your name, Jesus. God, we are here to declare your goodness. God, we're here to worship you in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's lift our voices to heaven right now. God, we need you and you alone. God, we declare your holiness in this place. God, we sing of your goodness and your grace. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, we are victorious through Christ. Oh, we magnify your great name, Jesus. God, we sing of your goodness. God, we sing of your power. God, we anoint. We thank you, Lord, for your anointing, your grace. Yeah, somebody lift your voice. Have your way in this place. We need you to show up, oh God. We worship you, Jesus. How do it be thy name? The song that says, I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. That's corporate worship. And I will sing praises unto thee among the nations. I don't know about you, but I love to worship by myself. But I love to worship even more and declare the goodness of God among the people in corporate worship. There's just something about when we come together, come on in one mind, in one accord, and declare the goodness of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. One more time. Can you put your hands together? Come on, let's declare He is good in this place. God, we declare the goodness of God. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Come on, before the music gets going, you're good, oh God. Your righteousness endureth forever. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name in this place. This is your sanctuary. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, lift your hands up to the Lord, for He's worthy of our praise. Lift your voice in one accord, hearts and hands we humbly raise. For He's the same, it's never changed.
here today to lift up the name of Jesus, to exalt you, O oh God, high above the heavens, exalted above the earth. We lift you up, Jesus. God, we want more of you in this place. More and more of you today.
you are so good come on with every breath I have today come on with passion you are good Psalm that says, I will greatly praise the Lord. That word greatly means passionately. He says, very specifically, he says, with my mouth. Yea, I will praise him. Here's the theme. Among the nations, among the people. God has been too good for me to keep my mouth shut. Come on, the walls. It doesn't matter if the walls hear me a thousand and one times during my devotions. I've got to get outside the walls. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let us declare his goodness among the people. Ah, we sing of your goodness, oh God.
sing this as a prayer, an acknowledgement of who He is and what He's been to us. With every breath that I may, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, my life, You have been faithful. Oh, yes, You have. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath I am made. Oh, I will see of the goodness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yes. All my life, you've been faithful. Hallelujah. I especially thank you for being there. I've lived by the goodness of God. I am who I am by the grace and the goodness of Almighty God. Where would I be today, God, if your love hadn't run after me and found me? And God, you hadn't wrapped your arms of grace and mercy about me. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. All my life, God, you've preserved me. All my life, God, you've had your hand upon me. All my life, God, you've spared me. And you've brought me to this day. you brought me to this moment in time. You've brought me to this moment in the kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. There's a stillness of the presence of God in this house, not to be confused with where is God. If you'll just let yourself go, and if you'll just reach out with all your heart, you put everything out of your mind. You'll exercise your faith a little bit. You'll find him. He's here. Hallelujah. He is here. His presence is here. His presence is real. Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Who oh, I will see of the goodness of God. 
Pastor, have you looked outside? Uh Uh-huh. Have you looked at the world? Oh, yeah. And God has never left us. He's never forsaken us. We still have hope in Him. We still have life eternal. We still have His presence that walks with us. Hallelujah. I sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. You need to learn how to sing of the goodness of God at all times. I will sing of the goodness of God. Things don't look so good, Pastor. That's okay. I'll sing of the goodness of God. Are you kidding me? No, no, no. I will sing of the goodness of God. How can you say that, Pastor? All my life, he's been faithful, and he'll be faithful through this. All my life, he has been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will see. Of the goodness of God. You're going to do something with that breath. I said, you're going to do something with it. You're going to proclaim attributes to something with that breath. We can say how bad it is. We can say how frustrating it is. We can, we can say anything negative we want. And our spirit will follow. But you can begin to talk about the goodness of God. And your spirit will follow that too. You can begin to proclaim faith in God as you begin to proclaim His name. And bless His name. Oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Just let that roll over and over and over in your spirit today. How many of you know God is good? How many of you feel His presence in the house today? Oh, hallelujah. Pastor, we're not running the aisles or dancing or carrying. I, I did that in the first, I, I was dancing in the first song. But there's such a gentle presence of the Lord here. It's almost as if God just breathing upon our hearts and minds today. Sometimes you need the peace of the Lord. You need to stand still and see the salvation of God. And we need to know that God is faithful, Brother Kenny. It's praying for you this morning. In fact, I don't know that I see anybody's face in this auditorium unless you're a guest that I, ha- I didn't pray for this morning. I sat here in the front and I just began to ask God, breathe upon us. Reign in this place today, I pray, God. We need the presence of the Lord. I know we're strong. I know, you know, we're good, strong Americans. We pull ourselves up by the bootstraps. We kill our own snakes. The reality is there's a spiritual nature to life that you and I need the presence of Almighty God in. And I feel that presence in this house today. So still, so quiet, so so gentle. Psalmist said, Lord, your gentleness has made me great. You need to learn to experience God in the gentle moments. Oh, I love it when the presence of God moves in and we're cutting a rug and we're acting crazy. But there's something about strength and impartation that happens in moments just like this. If you can just slow down for a minute and not, not get distracted, don't worship your worship. Just turn your eyes to God. Let the presence of God envelop this place. Envelop you as he just descends in this place. I asked the Lord, I said, God, would you just send your presence in this auditorium like a cloud today? Let the Shekinah glory of Almighty God just fill this auditorium today. And I feel it in the house. I said, God, then begin to reign. 
rain upon our dry and thirsty souls. Reign in peace. Reign in strength. Reign, O oh God, in this place. Before we go any further, I, I would like to, I, I've done this a few times, but if the Holy Ghost doesn't minister here today, this message is just going to be a bunch of empty words, and we're going to leave this place saying either that, that was neat or what was that all about? And it depends entirely upon how we receive the message today. And a lot of time that depends upon the soil. Most often. Whether we feel receptive, we feel worthy. You know, there's nothing like guilt or shame to keep us out of the Father's presence. And so we're going to repent, every one of us. We're going to, we've come through the gates of thanksgiving, or into his courts with thanksgiving, into his gates with praise, through worship, and through the song. But before we go further and allow God, the illumination of the presence of God to shine his word on, his, on the light of God, and we can get to that place where we receive the word of God and allow it to change our life. How many of you know that God changes everything through his word? He does everything by his word. And I believe, Brother Grant, that's why that last altar of incense was the last step before you went into that most holy place. The candlestick lit the Word of God. The presence of God illuminated the Word of God. He, there was the shoe bread that is the word of, is the bread of life. And after receiving all of those steps, that priest would walk, take one more step to that place of worship with revelation and understanding of the word, and he would begin to worship, and it would come up before God. He says, a, a wonderful smell, a sweet savor. But before we get there, we've got to go past the altar of sacrifice. Lord Jesus, all of us together, God, I ask that you forgive us for ever thought that we've entertained. God, as a man is, as he thinks, out of the heart flow the issues of life. And so, God, we thank you for what you've done here in this place. We thank you that we are here before, come boldly before this throne of, mer of grace to find mercy, God. And here we are boldly in your presence, knowing you're our loving Heavenly Father. And I ask that you forgive us of every thought, every thought that would hinder your workings in our life. And I pray, God, you would forgive us of every word that every thought produced. God, that that we spoke or that that we didn't speak that we should have. Those things that we gave life to and those things, God, that we spoke death to, I pray that you would forgive us. God, we know you love us. Your compassions fail not. So God, forgive us for the thought. Forgive us for the word. And Lord, certainly forgive us for every deed, everything that we've done. God, every word that gave life to an idea that was born out in action, God, I pray that you would forgive us. We want to be holy in your presence so we can receive your word with gladness and we can receive your word, oh God, with purity of heart. Because, God, we need you to minister to us today. We need your holy presence today, God. We, we want to be able to, to go beyond that veil and go into that place where the supernatural takes over and miracle signs and wonders happen in our life. And a answers are given to questions and fears and doubts uh, are removed. Oh, God, that can only happen in your presence. And, God, we want to go with clean heart and clean hands and a pure spirit. We want to be able to lift up holy hands. So God create within us, within us a clean heart so you can renew a right spirit within us, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, cover this audience in the blood of Calvary. Let the flood that you, God, that left your side, 
That Roman soldier had no idea what he was doing, Lord, when he plunged that spear into your side. But forthwith came blood that would cover our sin and water that would renew us in you, Lord. Cover us in your blood, I pray. Take away every doubt, every fear, every, every, every bit of shame. Anything that would hinder anyone in this auditorium from receiving this beautiful presence that is hovering in this house today. I pray, God, that you would pardon our iniquities. Cast our sins, O oh Lord, behind your back. Forgive us, I pray, God. We hunger for you. We've got to have you. We need your Holy Spirit. We can't survive without it, God. Oh, I thank you for your presence. I feel here, God. I thank you, Lord God, for the presence of the Father that I feel in the house, just gathering us to yourself. Be glorified in this house as we magnify you and we lift you up. We ask it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, I feel like I could just reach out and touch the Lord. We used to sing the old song, reach out and touch the Lord as he walks by. The presence of Almighty God is in this house to touch you, to strengthen you, to nourish you, to encourage you. Let, let your faith loose. Let your faith loose in this place. In Jesus' name. I'd like to begin reading today in Genesis chapter 6. You may think this a opposite and departure from where we are now, but if you'll just stay with me for a minute. I don't want to speak long today. And if you and I will listen to the Holy Ghost, and if we'll allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us today, we'll leave this place encouraged. How many of you would love to have the strength of the Lord? How many of you are weary in spirit and mind and emotions and maybe in body? Amen. I'd like to, gentlemen, I'm sorry I didn't forward my notes to you. I was having trouble back here, but we're going to go Genesis 5, 6, 5 through 8, Genesis 17 and 18, then Mark 4, 37 through 40. How many of you know God's righteous? Holy, pure, righteous. And he can't deny himself. He can't deny who and what he is. Thank God for the blood. The old song we sang that washes white as snow. Thank God for the blood of Calvary, the sacrifice of Calvary that removes our sins from us. Because God is righteous. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, that every imagination, everyone say every imagination, of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You ever wonder how that made God feel? Well, he tells us in the next verse, And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I'll destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, the creeping thing, the fowl of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. I love that verse 8 starts with, but. However. That little contrast. But Noah found grace 
in the eyes of the Lord. God told Noah in Genesis 6 and 17, And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee, (laughs) another scripture that starts with that saving word, I'm going to destroy every human on the planet. I'm going to destroy every beast upon the planet. But with thee, I'll establish my, I will establish my covenant. Mark chapter 4, verse 37 through 40. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship. I won't say into the ship. Not against the ship, into the ship, so that it was now full. And he, speaking of Jesus, was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awakened him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? He arose and rebuked the wind, said unto the sea, Peace, be still. The wind ceased. And there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? And how is it that ye have no faith? Thank you, Lord, for your word, because it does give us faith. Faith cometh by hearing your word. And I pray, God, that you would speak your word to our heart today. Help me, O Lord. Help my vocabulary, but most important, take control of my spirit and flow through me. Speak to us today. Minister to us today. We will give you the praise and thank you for it. Everyone said amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, music staff, for doing such a wonderful job today. We love you and appreciate you. Usher us into the presence of Almighty God. We come from all walks of life into this room and all points of our brain scattered all over as many points of life that we come from. And it's nice to have a A group of people that love God and that are in tune with the Holy Ghost that help us, usher us into the presence of Almighty God. Thank you. Thank you, singers. Thank you, staff, music staff. I want to talk to you from this point today, a good storm. A good storm. Now, that may seem like an oxymoron to you, but did you know that thunderstorms are a small, intense weather system? that make strong winds, heavy rain, lightning, and thunder, and they serve a purpose. They cool the earth. They're a direct result of the atmosphere heating and the increased air convection. They are results of an they are the results of an unstable environment. A thunderstorm is a result of an unstable environment. Boy, that there's a sermon in there somewhere. Dry conditions allow dust and industrial gases and debris from the earth to rise up into the atmosphere. Then the rain from the thunderstorm washes the pollutants out of the air. The heat and the pressure from lightning turns nitrogen and other gases of of the air into useful compounds that are a natural fertilizer which help plants make vital proteins. It produces ozone that is a vital gas in our atmosphere. Now, you didn't know you was going to science class, did you? Stick with me. I'm going somewhere. One of the main purposes for hurricanes, you know, that we just had come through, The main purpose for hurricanes around the globe is to temperature balance between the poles and the equator because the equator gets so hot, if it were not for the strong storms of the hurricanes, nothing could live around the equator. And so the hurricanes, as much as Brother Lashley, you don't like them because they mess up your vacation, they distribute and disperse all that heat around the equator and warm us up here in the, in the northern areas, hurricanes, due to their size and interactions with upper levels of the atmosphere, are efficient movers of equatorial yeah, heat around the equator. 
thunderstorms balance the earth's atmospheres. Why, why are you going here? Because there's a direct correlation in nature and spiritual. Storms balance Earth's atmosphere. Without thunderstorms and lightning, the Earth's atmosphere electrical balance would disappear in five minutes. And you and I would cease to exist in five minutes. About 100 lightning bolts from a thunderstorm strike the earth every second. That's 8 million per day and 3 billion every year. Well, why? Well, because the storms wash away collected debris from dry spills that hinder normal flow of water, which nourishes the surrounding lands. A good storm will remove excess bacteria that causes imbalances and disease. Though they seem destructive and turbulent at times, the big picture needs a good storm periodically. The earth is in a natural process of decay. And we need rainstorms to renew and revive life and promote growth in the earth. Now I realize that we are going through a storm of proportions that this generation has never seen. However, we are seeing corruption and sinfulness on a scale that we've never seen before either. I hate that it's taken such a storm to rock society out of our make-believe world of pseudo-security and antichrist apathy. I hate that, but we are experiencing pestilence, wars, and rumors of continuing wars that are washing away years of spiritual dry debris from our nation. Men and women are looking at society and things that are going on around us, not just a pandemic, but the wars and the rumors of wars. And that has kind of overshadowed all the earthquakes that were taking place a couple years ago, rocking our world in places that we didn't really, that, that wasn't usually the norm. And men and women are starting to say, you know, there's something going on. We're living in a time of famine in our society. It's a famine of truth. It's a famine of righteousness. It's a famine of the Word of God. This dry spill in our nation has brought such a barrier of ungodly debris that honest, hungry, and searching men and women are having a hard time finding the water of life. It's high time. It was high time for a storm of these proportions and magnitude to wash away everything that would hinder men and women from finding the truth. I know we don't like it. I, I know we wish it'd go back to norm, but norm wasn't making it. Norm wasn't fixing it. Norm was not opening the doors that these things are beginning to open. The earth is groaning for the return of its creator. The scripture said that would happen. And the church has been praying for revival and harvest. What did we expect? What did we expect? It was going to take such a storm to awaken our world from its sleep concerning eternity and an eternal God and bring about end time harvest. Because people won't change until we have to. We all like our convenience. We all like everything to work the way it's supposed to work. We all like to be able to go to work and know there's going to be a job when we get there. We all like to know if we wash our hands and, and, and uh, live a sanitary life that we probably are not going to contact any kind of a disease. A good chance we're going to live a long, good, healthy life. We all like the securities that come naturally in life. But those natural securities do absolutely nothing to help us in an eternal world. And there is an eternal world that is coming. 
And God loved us. God loved humanity enough. I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. To send such a storm, such a magnificent storm into our world. Storms that collide. Storm upon storm. Wave upon wave. Issue upon issue. Fear upon fear. Until humanity is saying, what's going on? It's storming in our world, and it's affected not just the world, but it's affected our lives as well. I wish that it wouldn't happen this way, but I don't live for God because He promised there'd be no storms in this world. If you think you're going to live for God because you don't want no more problems... You, to live for God, you have to buck the current. Anybody that said living for God is easy and sissies do that has never really tried to live for God. I have found this. I, I, I used to not understand it very well. I remember Bishop and my uncle used to tell me this growing up. He said, Jeffrey, it's hard to live for God easy. It's difficult to live for God easy. But it's easy to live for God hard. Young people, I tell you, let me just pass it on, okay? It's nigh and impossible to live for God easy in this day and age. But if you'll give yourself 110% to it and you'll forsake everything that's going on around you and lift up your eyes and let God be the center of your joy, I promise you, it's easy to live for God. Every once in a while, we need a good storm. Every once in a while, we need a good storm. Matthew 5 and 45 says, That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he makes the sun to rise upon evil and the good. We like it when the sun's shining. How many of you believe that you deserve every time the sun shines on you, every time good things happen to you? Man, we just deserve that, don't we? God, it's about time you figured this out. But then his next statement is, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. Every once in a while, the just as well as the unjust face a storm. Job said, we've received good at the hand of God. Shall we not receive evil? But he he ends up saying, yea, though he slays me, yet will I trust him. I know he's faithful. How many of you know that God's faithful? then how many of you realize we're going to get through this thing by the presence of Almighty God, through the help of the Almighty God? The only way you're going to get through this is through the help of Almighty God. And God has allowed storms to come into our world to rock our world, ours as well as society, to the point that we realize that God is the only thing stable in this world. Every once in a while, we need a good storm to come in our life and wash away all the little... uh, uh, those things that we built ourselves up with, the parapets that we put in our life to spare ourselves from all the issues of life. He said, no. He said, you just get in my hand and nothing can pluck you out of my hand. I understand the damage of this storm. Trust me, I do. I've seen the benefits, though, as well. The church needs the washing and the renewal as well. And I'm well aware of suffering this storm has caused. But the damage that the suffering this has caused the church is not eternal. But the benefits can be. I said the benefits can be. This storm is intended to bring men and women to the only power and hope that can save them. And it's to bring the church back to the realization that He is still the only hope. He's still the only thing that can satisfy us. He's still our eternal reward. Breakthrough infections, failed war efforts of the mightiest nations on the planet haven't succeeded in anything except exciting greater fear and instability. There's no safe place to turn. Oh, yes, there is. Oh, yes, there is. 
God's allowing situations to wash away man's attempts without God to fail miserably and turn us to his provision and back to his righteousness. This is the beginning of the latter rain. I've talked about the storm that happens on the outside. I've talked about the pressures that are raging our world on the outside. The only way to combat the pressures on the outside is to build up a pressure system on the inside. Because there's a rain that's coming upon the church. I know there's floods that are coming from without. And I know there's issues that are coming without. And I realize that they are real pressures. I am, I am not minimizing the effects of what's happened in our world. I'm just trying to maximize the anointing and the power that can rise up on the inside of a believer. We have Jesus in our boat. I said we have Jesus in our boat. The end time harvest is upon us. Right around the corner. It's happening. And we need the reign of God to wash away every obstacle, every opposition, every false doctrine of hindrance, every carnal spirit, every temptation. I said we need the reign of God to wash upon the church. I realize that it's storming on the outside, but it do us good to have a real good Holy Ghost storm on the inside and saturate us afresh in the presence of Almighty God. Fill my cup, God. Fill this vessel, oh God, with your presence. Why? Because you're not going to live in a vacuum. We need the rain to turn the earth and the heavenly rain to saturate the church. So don't hate the storm. Don't resent the tempest. It's making way for the reign of the Spirit that's following. How many of you have had issues in your life? I know many of you have had situations. It's like storms just won't quit. Storm after storm after storm, blowing after blowing after blowing, issue after issue after issue. Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1, the Old Testament prophet said, Ask ye of the Lord rain in the times of the latter rain. Well, it's raining. If it's already raining, why do I ask God for rain? Because you and I need it on the inside. You and I need an anointing on the inside. The latter rain is for those from without that don't know the truth, that, are, that need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, the latter rain is for those that are searching, hungry, and thirsting for the living God. And God said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to begin to pour out my spirit upon all flesh, but I'm going to need a church that's alive and vibrant and full of my power. And so he says, ask for rain for yourselves uh, while the latter rain is falling in the earth. Let me tell you what, it's storming outside. Men and women are facing storms they've never faced before. The latter rain is happening, driving men and women to find security, making them look for hope, and the church is the hope. The church is supposed to be full of the reign of Almighty God, full of the anointing of Almighty God, so that we can be that bastion of hope that they can run to, that tower of grace that they can run to in times of adversity and be saved. So rest, God. God, rain upon me. Rain, oh God, upon my thirsty soul. This is a time for the church to be saturated with the presence of God. Saturated with the anointing of God. And if you got a few storms going on in your life, let them roll. Maybe they'll wash out the debris. Maybe they'll wash out the issues. Maybe they'll wash out the hard places of our life so that the soft rain of the grace of God and the anointing of His Spirit can find rest and places in our spirits. Rain, God. Ask ye the Lord for rain. And I'm not just reading a scripture here. 
I'm encouraging you, imploring you. Quit allowing what's around you to flow into you. I realize that there's all kinds of stuff happening on the outside. Young people, hear me. I realize that there's all kinds of stuff going on. You cannot remain neutral. When I was a kid, and believe it or not, I was one time. I'm over half a century old. Like dirt. When I was a kid, a lot of times we had to go looking for it. You see, there's this edemic nature in every one of us that wants to fulfill the lust of the flesh. In my generation, we had to be initiators. Your generation, thanks to the internet, it's in your purse. You don't have to go looking for it. Guys, it's in your pocket. And if you're not full of the reign of the Holy Ghost, life naturally depletes us. Even from the most intense moments in the presence of God. Moses goes up on the mountaintop. Y'all remember that guy? Stays in the presence of God. In the presence of God, sustained by God himself for 40 days. Doesn't eat, doesn't drink. Don't try that. Sustained by Almighty God for 40 days. That's a pretty intense prayer meeting. Such that he comes off the mountain and Israel couldn't even look at his face. Because it shone with such glory from being in the presence of Almighty God. He should never have to pray again, right? I mean, I've never seen your face shining. You're full of the Holy Ghost, Brother Grant, but I've never seen your face shine. There's something about this human nature that's in a state of decay since Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. It doesn't matter how close you get to God, how much His presence uh, fills your spirit. There's this thing called flesh that's porous. Spiritually porous. And it begins to leach out. That's why he said, pray this. Our Father in heaven, give us this day our. We've got to be in continual presence of Almighty God. So Moses, after a period of time, the glory began to wane off of his face. I don't care how anointed you were at camp. I don't care how anointed we got a few weeks ago. Doesn't matter what dimension we stepped in. You got this poor spirit. And if you don't stay full, continually full, there's a void. There's a void in our spirit. And the storms of life will batter against your vessel long enough. If there is a void inside, it'll begin to fill it. You can't just resist, guys. Okay? Been there, tried that. You can't just, re- you're not strong enough. He didn't say resist temptation, he said flee from it. Well, if I'm going to flee from it, where am I going to go? I go to the rock of my salvation. Come on. If you're going to flee from the things of this world, you need something to flee to something. And it's the presence of God. He said he set apart the the godly for himself. Holiness? 
Oh, God, Pastor, don't start preaching on holiness. Holiness has set, a, set myself apart from the world, but it set myself unto God. You can't just set yourself apart from something and stay holy. you got to set yourself apart unto God. And that's what this rain thing is. God, I'm going to set myself apart from this rain that's going on in the world. I'm not going to fill my mind and my emotions and my life with all the turbulence that's going on in the world. Yeah, I realize there's pressures out there. Then the more pressures that are out there, the more pressure I need on the inside. The more of you I need on the inside. I don't want that fear to get in my mind. I don't want to get frustration to get in my mind. I don't want that anger to get in my mind. I don't want that chaos chaos in my mind. God, I want your peace. God, I want your anointing. God, I want your grace. And so I'm going to seek the reign of Almighty God rather than allow the latter reign, the issues that are going on in the world, to get into my spirit. When was the last time that God reigned in you? Well, we got enough chaos going on around us. Don't allow it to fill your boat. Don't allow it to fill your spirit. Don't get upset about it. Well, Pastor, it's wrong. I know it's wrong. It's the world. What do you expect? You don't expect a dog to meow. I don't expect the world to be righteous and peaceful and holy and there is a God of this world, remember? But there's a God of the church as well. You don't have to succumb to the issues and the pressures that are going out there. Let the God of righteousness begin to reign in your spirit. If you'll stay full of the presence of God, there'll be nothing on the outs, no room for anything on the outside to consume or contaminate your spirit. Let a storm blow in your life. Let it clear out everything that would hinder the presence of God. We may ask, why, God, do you allow such a devastating storm and its effects to happen upon our world? Why do there need to be such chaos and hopelessness loosed upon society? I remind you, it's not God that did it. God allows it. It's a consequence of sin. I didn't say it was caused by God. It's caused by sin in the world. It's a consequence of man sinning and not committing that sin to God and not, not asking repentance and turning from his sin. It's a consequence of the direction that the world has been going for generations and generations. Why? Because God so loved the world. That doesn't make sense. Oh, it makes perfect sense. A storm's the only thing that'll rock our boats. As long as the sun's shining, we'll keep sailing the direction we've been going, even if it is the wrong direction. But you let a good uh, Arachlodon come and, and shake our world. You let a good uh, typhoon come and shake uh, our world. You let something upset the basket, and all of a sudden, men begin to look differently. For whence comes my help? Oh, it's not in the economy. It's not in the government. It's not in my checks. It's not in anything. But it comes from Almighty God. We're in a position, we're in a place where men and women are realizing the only, body, the only person that can help me is Almighty God. And it's time for the church to allow Almighty God to reign in our life so that when they come to you and when they're looking for an answer, when they're looking for peace, it just flows out of us. Our faith... Let me tell you, a ship full of the effects of the storm will sink. I don't care how good the ship was built. I don't care what name is stamped on the side. I don't care what equipment is in the ship. You let the ship get full of what's around it, it'll sink. The disciples doing the will of God. With the Lord in their life, in their boat, met a storm. Purposefully met a storm. 
I believe it was the enemy to keep them from meeting the, the men of Gadara. You know, there is a prince of the air. But that's okay. God used it as an object lesson. One of these days, Brother Kenny, I'm going to preach a message. Blow, storm, blow. Because the anchor still holds. And that anchor reaches beyond the veil. Come on. Blow, storm, blow. My God is able. And my God is in the ship. You and I just got to stir it up a little bit. I said, you and I just got to stir it up a little bit. Uh, They're on their way. God's got a purpose. He's told them where to go. God's told us where to go. He's told us how to get there. The only difference is you and I got to keep him awake in our life. You and I got to keep that spirit stirred up in our life. Don't you dare let it go to sleep at a time like this. Don't you let the presence of God, don't you let the anointing of God go to sleep in the middle of this storm. Keep it awake. Stir up the gift that is within you. Stir it up. Storm starts. We can handle this. They didn't learn their lesson, Brother Lashley. Another time, they're with the Lord. He sends them away, and they get in a boat, and they're rowing, and the Bible says a great storm came upon them, and they rowed with all their might all all night long. And Jesus finally had to show up. But the Bible says he would have passed them by if they hadn't called out on them. Now, that's scary. I said, I'm sure they were hollering back and forth at one another. Peter, can you row a little harder? Well, James, can you bail a little better? Thomas, I don't care if you ain't a fisherman. Grab a row. Row this thing. And Jesus comes walking on the water, shows himself to them. They knew he was the only one that could calm this thing. And the Bible said he would have passed him by. But somebody said, wait a minute. Hold on. Ain't we been struggling long enough? Haven't we been doing, haven't we been beating our heads against the wall long enough? Come on, I'm talking to somebody today. Haven't you been fighting that demon long enough? Haven't you been facing that situation long enough? Haven't you been struggling against that wind long enough? Both times they learned that the Lord can calm the seas. The Bible says that the boat was full. Isaiah 59 and 19 said, When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Now, that's the way it's written, but if you go back, that's the way it's translated. But if you go back to the way it was written, it reads this way. When the enemy shall come in, comma, like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Rain, God, rain. Let the flood of your presence, when the enemy comes in, let the Spirit of God so saturate us that like a flood, the Holy Ghost just pushes it out of the way and directs it away from us. And we keep walking in truth. We keep walking in dominion. We keep walking in purpose. How many of you like to have dominion over what's facing you, what's harassing your home? Come on. How many of you like some peace in your life? Ah, Come on. Quit rowing against it. And wake the Lord up. I said, quit rowing against it and ask God, begin to reign in my life. God, I'm not asking you to fix this thing. I'm just asking you to anoint me. I'm just asking you to be close with me. I'm just asking you to wake up, God, and minister to me. I don't know what's going to happen. The boat might go down, but as long as I'm with you, I'll be all right, Jesus. Uh, Come on. God, I don't care how you do it. I don't care when you do it. Just keep me close to you while you do it. Or we can keep struggling. This wasn't supposed to go this direction. God, we've had sprinklings of your spirit. They've kept us alive. But we need you to come like a flood. Wow. 
We need you to come like a flood, oh God, and raise up a standard against this chaos. This endeavor to infiltrate into our homes and into our lives, into our faith. Come, oh God, and rain upon us, I pray. God, we live in a dry and thirsty land. Everywhere we walk, God, it leeches life out of us. Every negative thing we hear, God, comes against the spirit that is within us. We need you, God, to saturate us. Come like a flood, oh God, and wash over us. The psalmist found himself in a similar situation. Psalm 63, he said, oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. I wonder when he learned how to do that. Sometimes I let my problem get me to the point where I'm almost about to breaking point. Anybody besides me that hard-headed? I wonder how many times uh, David got there before he realized, you know what, I could have took care of this a long time ago and saved myself, oh God, I'm talking to somebody, a lot of heartache, a lot of issues, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. I could have saved myself a lot of worry. God, if I'd have sought you early about this situation, if I'd have given it to you early... Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. I'm telling you, there's no hope in this world. Especially for a child of God. You who have known the peace of the Lord. You who have known the provision of Almighty God. Don't allow this world to worry you and upset you. and Don't think that your provision comes from this world. There's no water in this world. There's no hope in this world except the floods that are coming against it. Lord, he said, to see thy power and thy glory, so have I seen thee in the sanctuary. Oh, God, baptize us in this place with your rain. Oh, God, pour out your spirit in this place. Refresh our souls. Renew our spirits. So he answers in Isaiah 44 and 3, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your seed and my blessing upon your offspring. Let me tell you, I know it's storming on the outside of the church, but we need a downpour of his Holy Ghost rain in this assembly. I said we need a downpour of God's rain in our hearts. Oh, not just in the church, in our lives, in our homes. Let it rain, God. Come and rain upon our souls. God, would you just open the floodgates of heaven and baptize us afresh? with your Holy Spirit. Would you close your eyes in this auditorium today and pray with me? We need your presence, God. We can't do this alone. God, we thirst for your Spirit. Rain upon our souls. God, we live in this dry and thirsty land of a godless society and we're parched without your anointing. Jesus, flood our souls. Flood our souls with your presence, oh God. Fill this place today, God, with your, with your Shekinah glory and let the, the cloud of your glory descend in this place and begin to rain in every heart, God, that is dry. Every individual that, Lord, it's been so long since they felt the warmness, the gentleness of your reign. Reign. Reign, oh God. Soften every spirit that's been hardened by this famine. Visit, oh God, every tormented soul. Pour yourself, Almighty God, in every.
every empty vessel in this house. Wash away every barrier. Flood through our hearts. Break every chain of sorrow. Break every shackle of shame. Break, oh God, every bondage of sin. Pour into this place, oh God, I ask. Visit this vine that you planted. Visit this house of worship that was dedicated to you. And oh God, walk into every temple that is represented in this house of worship. Let your glory fill this place. Let your presence fill this place. Would you stand to your feet and lift your hands and ask God to pour himself into you. Go ahead and empty out your spirit. Go ahead and, and make room. Tear down walls of resistance, oh God, and melt walls of defense. Dismantle, oh God, every wall of disunity and make everything new. Make everything new. Reign of heaven. Cleanse, oh God, the atmosphere. Cleanse the atmosphere, I pray, God, with your presence. Wash away, oh God. Wash away, oh God. Renew our faith. Restore our vision. Release torrents of godly passion from our soul, I pray. Yeah. We need your rain, God. We need your rain, God. God, it's storming on the outside, but would you reign within? Wash away everything that is opposing you. Wash away every stain.